Welcome to another great episode of Retro Vaniacs. This is episode four. I uh, hope you've listened to the previous three. They've been just incredible. We're getting a lot of great feedback, although none of it is in the form of a question that we can use for the show. Uh, so if you like the show, please find us on Facebook or on iTunes and write a review on iTunes, on Twitter or Retro Vaniacs. But enough about how to find us. Let me introduce you to the other host of the show, Jeremy Gregory. Yes, sir. Reporting for duty, sir. And Billy Holiday. I'm putting Jeremy Gregory to permanently peeling potatoes Uh-oh. after this one. Yeah, th- this week may be a kind of a divisive game, for the three of us at least. But before we get to that, uh, I didn't know if you guys have been playing anything interesting lately. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on both Persona 4, because I saw the Persona 5 preview trailer, and I'd like to at least finish 4 before I even pretend I'm going to play 5. And I've been playing the last story for the Wii because I bought it, and I thought it was finally time to play through it, because I also don't need to play more RPGs, uh, yet I keep adding them onto my, onto my pile. So what, do you, what do you think of the last story? Is that, is that worth looking into? I like it a lot. Now, did you like the other Mistwalker games? I guess Lost Odyssey was the one I really, really liked, which is what made me try this one. It, it's got that same feeling to the story, where it's, it's a very small group you're dealing with you have the same characters every time you don't rotate through a bunch of characters you can play as but it's not really i don't know what defines an rpg anymore i mean it's not it's not turn-based it's real time but you don't control each of your uh teammates they kind of go on their own auto attack and and you can sort of give them commands in certain points but it's very vague but it's definitely not an action rpg because you don't it's not like you hit a button and they swing their sword. You just run at a guy and your guy will fight him, and then you can kind of make other attacks happen in the way. I mean, I'm really enjoying it, but I just don't, I don't know what I would qualify the game as. I guess a role-playing game, but it's, it's more of an adventure game with uh, equipment. Hmm. Well, I, might, I might actually have to check that out. I kind of had my eye on it and never really knew if it was uh, worth it, but it um, uh, sounds kind of interesting. Well, the other, the other reason I decided to, to finally play it is someone said it was only about 20 hours long, which after playing a bunch of 80 to 100 hour long role playing games, a 20 hour role playing game sounds perfect. That would seem like a demo to me at this point. Well, there's not a lot of, uh, at least as far as I've gotten, there's not a whole lot of downtime. I mean, it starts you out and it's action, action, action. And the little bit of downtime you have is still exploring and talking to people and, and finding quests to do. There's not a whole lot of, of what seems to be pointless content. So. No, I, yeah, I didn't mean to say that as like that was a bad thing. I would love to play a role playing game at this point. That didn't take like a hundred hour, hundred hours of my time. Uh, so that sounds that sounds pretty cool. I gotta, don't let Jeremy fool you. He he's not going to play any other games. I think he's just going to play General Chaos from now on. It's I think possible. he's fa- he's found his jam. It could it's be very his, possible. His penance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so other than General Chaos, have either of you been playing anything else noteworthy or? Uh, about the only thing I've been playing lately is uh, I, I kind of stepped back from The Witcher 3 and moved over to yet another open world game with the um, with Batman Arkham Knight. Um, that came out like last week. I've been playing that a good deal and I really like it. Uh, I know a lot of people were, were kind of talking shit about using the Batmobile, but I love using the Batmobile. That was always a highlight of the Batman games when I was a kid. If it had a Batmobile stage, I was totally in for it and... This whole game seems to be one big Batmobile stage, so I'm pretty into it. I actually really like it. And I, I'm also playing it uh, a ton. Uh, we, I, I finished the main mission. Of course, there's a, a ton to do. The Riddler trophies are back, which I'm trying to collect. They're in mass, like 230-some. But I agree, the Batmobile, I was a little, a little leery about it going in because I'd heard a lot of bad things. Um, Everything from, you know, it's just a little tough to control to people complaining that it ruins the game altogether. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and it controls differently from any other vehicle in any other game I've ever played. Uh, but, yeah, if you were a kid, this was, uh, you would dream about having uh, to use the Batmobile like this. Essentially, uh, it's just an indestructible tank. Uh, you don't have to worry about really running into things. Instead, you just kind of run through them. And I've just had a great time with it so far. I really don't have any complaints. I've saved, really them, like, all, I've saved them all for this game coming up. <laughs> I, I really like how the Batmobile is, is used in, in a lot of the missions. 
um, especially like the the first big mission where you go to the chemical plant or whatever, and and uh, you have to switch back and forth between Batman, the Batmobile, um, to to get through the entire thing, and it, it's so well used uh, in that mission that it really sold me on it. Uh, even though there were so many people just kind of being like, I don't want to do the Batmobile. Well, I don't. It's it's awesome. It's a really cool. Uh, you know, if they just did Arkham City again. I would have probably been less excited. But with the Batmobile adding that in, it feels like a different game. It does. And uh, maybe we should just talk about that for this episode. <laughs> we'll scrap the original topic for a game I have not played. In fact, the last of the new Batman games I played was uh, uh, the original Arkham Asylum, which I thought was great. And then I picked up Arkham City, and I've been kind of into it. But it just isn't as good. Like, Arkham Asylum was so tight and compact and well-made that I didn't think City was nearly as good. Do you think Arkham Knight is on the same level? Well, if, if uh, as far as being compa- I liked Arkham Asylum uh, also for the same reason. I, it was a large area, but it was, and I was really kind of open world, burned out at that point in time. So it was nice that you know you had an area to explore, but it was still kind of uh, contained. Uh, where Arkham City was much more a sprawling, you know, city to travel along. This one's even bigger. So if you didn't like that aspect of city. I don't know if you would care for this one because it just expands upon that further. The games seem to just keep becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, it actually, Arkham City took me a long time to get into because I loved Arkham Asylum so much because it was like you said, it was so compact. It was like playing a almost like a modern day Metroid game or something. Uh, and going to that that open city, I just couldn't get into it for about half the game. But eventually, I, I finally came around to it. And uh, I, I still don't like it as much as Asylum, uh, but it, it's pretty great. But I already like uh, Arkham Knight a good deal more than I do Arkham City. Well, at least it seems we're in agreement that Arkham Knight is worth checking out. Unlike this week's game, which may or may not have a few fans and major detractors, General Chaos for the Sega Genesis. <laughs> Now, this was on Jeremy's list of games, I believe. Or was it on my list of games? No, it was on my list. Um, I, it was one I actually would have put on there. Uh, did you have this before? I rented it a thousand times as a kid. And that was how I kind of knew about it from then. I have not played it since I was a kid. But I, I was really wanting to kind of come back to it and see if it held up to what I remember it being as a kid. Yeah, and I had rented this one. I do recall renting this one uh, just once, and uh, that's probably a sign, because I was a, a multiple. If there was a game I liked, I would uh, rent it over and over. I rented this one once, really went into it not remembering a single thing about it, and that was probably for the better. Well, I had not played this before. Um, I, I know on the uh, video for Castle of Illusion, Jeremy, you had said that you weren't really a Genesis person, and neither was I. I had a Nintendo... And then I went straight to the TurboGrafx-16 because I like to buy failures. So I didn't have a Genesis. Uh, and you so didn't I buy this game, this. though. I, well, I, well, I had this game uh, way later. I used to work at an electronics boutique for five years. And I started right in uh, 1995, right when the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation were coming out in the window of, you know, the store was pre-selling them and pushing them. And one of their that's when they started their big pre-sale um, trade-in program. So you trade in a system in 10 games and get $100 off. But... At that time, they hadn't really thought out their trade-in system well. So instead of having every game have their own unique ID, ID number, it was every system had their own ID number for games. So if I traded in, let's say, a copy of Final Fantasy II and a copy of Madden 92, they'd come under the same number, even though we would sell Madden 92 for $5 and you'd sell Final Fantasy II for, let's say, 50 But they have no way to tell what the items were. So I bought a whole lot of games for 2 to $3 that were probably worth a lot more. And in that collection of games, I bought General Chaos for the Genesis. And even though I, I owned it for probably 20-plus years, I never actually played it. Uh, and then I sold it on eBay when I got rid of a lot of Genesis games I probably was never going to play because I didn't know I was going to do a podcast. Uh, so I wanted to pick that one as well so that I could finally see what this game was that I had for 20 years that I never actually played. So I, I 
even though you wanted to play it, I get the idea that this is going to be a bloodbath. And I feel like I'm going to be the only one defending General Chaos here. Unless you two have come around to, to realizing just what an amazing game General Chaos is. I, th- I, I think don't think that's likely, but I am going to fall on General Chaos's incredibly janky sword for the rest of us, and I'm going to do my best to try and convince you guys that, that General Chaos is a good game. I'm going to fail, but I'm going to try. And the fall on that sword is going to be a, an incredibly slow, uh, prolonged fall. That's all right. <laughs> I will do that for General Chaos. It's, I, I, I'm probably the only person on Earth that is, that is going to, to defend General Chaos, so it may as well be me. Well, before we get into, although I think Billy may have shown his hand, uh, but I think before we get into our thoughts on it, we should probably explain the game itself. Uh, General Chaos is a squad-based combat game. It's not really a strategy game as much as it's kind of a very rudimentary real-time strategy game, uh, but with, with a squad. So each, you know, each person is their own unit. You don't have units to move around a big field, and, and the entire uh, combat area is one screen size, so you're not scrolling around the screen. There's no building like you would in a, in a regular real-time strategy game, but it's just sort of uh, kind of like you're thrown right into the combat. So it's, it, each game should take you two to three minutes, if that, for a, for a combat fight, and that's, that might be pushing it. But it's on, a, it's on a console, which makes the control, in my mind, nowhere near as tight as it needs to be for a game of this style. And that's exactly within the first few minutes of playing. I, I realized what this game really needs is to not be on the Sega Genesis. Uh, it needs a mouse. This kind of game, any time, any game, and there weren't a lot, but any time they wanted you to use the D pad for a, a crosshairs or a cursor, uh, it it usually just didn't turn out that good. It's just too slow. It moves. It's just too sluggish, and uh, that was my main problem with this one coming in as it's just may have been a fun pc game i just don't think the genesis was the the right venue for it did any of us actually check to see if this was a pc game at some point it was not it was made for the sega genesis uh for electronic arts exclusively and actually that was one of the things i i saw you know when i first looked at it the art looked really not familiar, but but definitely looked like something you'd see in an arcade. So I did a little bit of research, which means just a Google search. But the same person who did the art design for this was a guy named Brian Collin, who also did Rampage, Xenophobe, and Arch Rivals. And those are all very similar-looking art styles to this. It's kind of cartoony with bulgy eyes. Uh, definitely not a realistic you know, human beings, but definitely a very cartoony look, uh, which I think helps this game uh, immensely. I think it's one of the best aspects of the game. I mean, regardless of what you think of the game, uh, how it plays... I think it looks great uh, for a Sega Genesis game. And, and since you said that about, you know, those previous games that he did, makes sense. Uh, it's got that uh, certain character to it that a lot of those, uh, those games that, that he did have. Um, but, yeah, I, I love the way it looks. It's, it's just an awesome-looking game. And even I, I can't detract from that. My one big uh, compliment is it's a uh, – I do enjoy the art style of it. I imagine that's probably – as a uh, as a kid, I wasn't very interested in, in war type games. I imagine that's probably what drew me in. Uh, it's a very nice game to look at. All the characters, you know, they could have made them uh, just kind of you know cookie cutter, very similar. Each character has his own kind of unique look, and the stages are small, just you know one screen at a time. But I thought the stages were pretty well detailed. Also, it's uh, for the Genesis. A, it's I will say a very nice looking game. One of the things that you'll notice if you're listening to this uh, episode is there's not as many sound clips, or at least different sound clips, as there were in other games. That's because this game has a total of two musical pieces for the entire game, uh, and they're they're pretty basic and kind of repetitive. But I it didn't bother me when I was playing it. It really was only something I kind of noticed when I was looking to decide how I was going to put this show together. Uh, that there really is there's only two pieces of music, and it it feels and and looks like. I mean, you know, when you asked if it was on a PC, it would not have surprised me at all if this was on a PC before. This feels very much 
like a, a PC sort of game. But a lot of the Electronic Arts games for the Genesis really did have that feel to them anyway. Yeah, and I was, uh, I'm, I'm kind of shocked to learn that because a lot of those old Electronic Arts games were also MS-DOS games. So this one not at least showing up on that uh, is kind of crazy. That means somebody made a real-time strategy game back before that was really a big thing on the Genesis with a three-button controller. That's, that's insane. No one should ever do that, but, but they actually did, for better or worse. For worse. <laughs> it, well, I, I guess that's... I, I don't know if I'd say it's definitely a bad idea. I can see how it could work. I just think there's some, some minor problems with this specific setup that made it not as playable as I would have liked. But before we get into even some of that, the, the levels themselves. So when you, you start the game... You get to see which side you're on. You're either General Chaos or General Havoc. If you're one player, you're always General Chaos. Uh, but you could play this against a friend, or you could both be on the same side. Uh, and then it shows you a map, and it picks a spot in the middle of the map to have your first skirmish. And then you get to pick between four different groups of characters. Um, I don't remember the names of these groups. I don't know if you guys remember the exact names, but it's basically a whole bunch of guys with machine guns, guys with um, more aggressive combat weapons, guys with explosive weapons that don't have as many direct combat weapons, and then commandos, which plays like a totally different game altogether if you pick the commandos option. And then your, your opponent will have picked a team, and it's kind of got a little bit of a paper, rock, scissors sort of strategy to it, except that when you're playing one player, the computer pretty much always just plays assault troops, as far as I saw, which is the guys with either five machine guns or the guys with more uh, direct assault weapons. Yeah, that seemed to be their go-to uh, every time. I would have liked to maybe... Uh, seen it change up a little bit because if uh, they're playing the same team or same squad essentially every time, then uh, you kind of get the feel for your own same squad every time, and you don't get to really mess around with it. They did do a good job of, like you said, it's kind of the rock, paper, scissors uh, type thing. A lot of guys, you know, they have one strength, but for that they they are lacking uh, in something else. Uh, which I thought was uh, interesting, but uh, the computer really doesn't change their strategy up very much. So in turn, I just I just saw myself just kind of just picking. You know, once I found something that worked, I, I stuck with it. Whereas I may have had uh, a little bit more fun, kind of experimenting more with things. Yeah, and and that I, I would definitely have liked to see in the computer mix it up a little bit. And I can't remember if they do later on in the game, but. I know the computer never picks the commandos, um, and I, I don't think they ever pick the just the, the machine gun guys or anything like that. But it would have been neat to see that, or at least you know start up a mission and see the commando guys running around. Um, the only thing I think that, that really makes that not too big of an issue are the stages themselves, and I'm sure Jeremy will get to that. But there's so many; each stage is so different from the last that it, it, every single battle feels almost completely different. So yes, along with the battles being on one, you know, one screen, a lot of them have extra combat objectives that are optional, but will give you points that would definitely matter towards who wins the battle. Um, battles not determined necessarily by who kills the entire other team, uh, but by who gets the most points. Now, normally, at least when I played, whoever kills the other team gets the most points. But if you were able to, let's say, get down to one-on-one -on -one and, and you lose your last guy, but you completed the other objectives, you could still win the battle even though you lost all your characters. And a lot of the times I think that's why you'd want to use uh, the explosive troops or the, the rocket launcher troop uh, just to do some of the extra, you know, destroy all the helicopters on the map or destroy uh, all the ammo crates or whatever it is that's the extra piece uh, of, of the uh, extra objective in those, those sections. Yeah, and it can, it can be a, a good strategy uh, to go for that. Uh, unfortunately, the way a lot of matches play out, it can be very hard to, to reach those things before you end up in a, a quagmire of just, you know, getting your ass beat. But uh, if you can manage to, to get that secondary object, objective open, uh, done, uh, it's a pretty big bonus to you. And I'd say that was something else I thought was a, a, a kind of neat feature, and it added uh, some strategy to it. But I just, uh, at the same time, once the firefight really starts, I found it almost impossible, especially when you have to dedicate like one or two of your, your troops to 
accomplish this objective. It, it handicaps you in the main uh, firefight. Maybe that's a skill level uh, that I am lacking in this game, but I really was rarely able to pull off any of the uh, secondary objectives. Well, we'll probably get to this later, but co-op solved that um, almost completely. I can imagine that that, that would. Uh, playing with the, the commandos as well would help you with that. Um, and and that I, don't, I didn't play two players, so I don't know if it goes to the same kind of control as commandos. But when you're playing single player, the control is really what, what kind of ruins the game for me at least. So you have three buttons on your Genesis controller, and then the control pad moves around where the mouse cursor would go if you were doing it on any sane uh, way to play this game. So the, the B button moves your character to wherever it is that your cursor is standing, whatever the active of the five characters is. And it also switches to the next character in the row. So it doesn't go to the nearest character or another character that would be doing something you need. It just goes to the next character of the five that are, that are shown on the, the screen. And the C button will switch characters as well. So if you're looking for a specific character, you can keep hitting C till you get to the right character. Uh, and then if you hit the A button, it makes everybody attack. It seems like it should be very basic and very simple, but the game is fast enough, even though we just complained about the speed of the game. It's, it's not a fast game, but it's fast enough that that control, especially when things get really hectic and you're trying to control certain guys to do certain things, you're just banging on buttons, and you're just hoping that hitting the A button will probably kill somebody so that you can maybe free up three seconds of time to figure out what you're actually trying to do. At least that's how I ended up playing the game. I ignored all the the side objectives unless I accidentally managed to complete one, and it was just how can I position these five guys in any way to kill anything? Because if you're down by about two guys, you're not going to win. At least I couldn't. No, if you don't dominate this fight, from the very start, you're not gonna you're not gonna catch up. There's not gonna be any last second heroics. Your one soldier is not you know you don't have any Rambo's out there that one guy is not gonna take out three or four on the other squad. And I did try pretty hard early on. You know, I looked at the the map. Uh, I was like, well, let's put this guy. I tried some heavy strategy. Uh, once the firing begins, uh, no matter how much. You know, good intentions of of having a a well oiled machine out there. I had it just fell into tapping buttons. Uh, when somebody goes down, you can drag the cursor over them and call the medic. Uh, it was constantly just dragging it from one end to the other to pick these guys up, just so they can you know get the hell shot out of them again. And that's all it turned into for me, for the most part. Yeah, the. Uh, uh, <laughs> watching anyone play this for the first time is always great because just figuring out how to move those characters around is is not it's not a good way of of doing things uh, the mouse cursor itself is actually very slow it doesn't move around very fast and even the soldiers you should never use that one that goes through each individual soldier like the uh, you know you press the button it'll automatically go to the next one you need to use the what was it the c button uh, that go that you can pick individual people and it will stay on that person until you move them or, or select a different person. Um, that's the way to go about it. And positioning is 100% uh, the entire game. Uh, you have to be patient enough to, when the round starts, to figure out where you want your guys to go, get them there, and make sure you don't press that the attack button before they actually get close to that. Because as soon as you press that attack button, everyone attacks. Not just the person you've selected, but every single one of them. So if you start attacking and just keep pressing the button, you're just going to stand there. No one's ever going to get their, to their position. So you've got to really try to be patient, even though you're getting shot at, so you can get into that position and have a chance of winning. Because if you don't, you have zero chance. So aside from the, the ranged weapons that each of your characters has, and again, a lot of it is positioning to see if you can get... Uh, you know, the, the rifle fire, for example, is like in a cone of effect in front of you. The, uh, the rocket launcher goes pretty much in a straight line, so you have to really position that character right. It does a lot of damage, and it's clearly effective, but you have to get it to the right spot. I couldn't really determine how grenades or dynamite necessarily is aimed. Just if I was close enough to somebody, it would throw it. Um, but that's... Generally, it seems to home in on people. Um, if, if there's, the grenades actually go very far. Um, you know, they could definitely be used as a medium range attack. Uh, but the demolition, you have to be very close for them to actually hit their target. 
and they just uh, they just kind of seem to pick their targets at random. And that's not just the, the grenade guy or the demolition guy. That's everyone. Uh, you, you can't tell a person, okay, you need to shoot to your right now. Uh, they will just kind of shoot wherever they want to. If there's an enemy you know, to the right and there's some enemies down to the bottom, they'll take turns shooting you know, each, each direction. So that's another reason why it's very important to have a position uh, so that they're just not constantly turning or surrounded by enemies uh, to shoot you know, shit that's not there. And you talked about getting uh, getting the explosive guy in close. And that, uh, one thing I want to touch on is if it seems if two characters from the opposing teams get close enough, they you know you get the uh, the cartoon kind of you know the dust uh, the you know flying dirt flying up all over the place, and they get into uh, you get a little fighting mini game thrown in. You can dodge, uh, you can punch, you can kick. And I want to speak about a moment in this game, uh, probably. Uh, Really, I didn't enjoy this game, per se. Uh, it had its times, but there was only one moment where I think I found myself uh, enraged with it. Uh, and you might know where it's going. I know exactly uh, what you're going to say. I had conquered this man in a fist fight. Uh, you know, and you stand over him. Uh, you've got little health bars, and I drained his down pretty quick. And this was, you know, we had two guys left on each squad, and I was approaching my first victory on this game after playing for quite some time. Only to have, and I don't know if you can do this yourself. I don't know if you can avoid this. The guy's down on the ground, and the rat bastard pulls out a piece. He's, he pulls out like a, like a pistol from behind his back. And even though I won this fist fight, there's no honor on this battlefield. He shot me down anyway, and I lost just like that. Yeah, I can't really defend that, but it's, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, it's... I haven't figured out how to do it yourself. If there is a way, I'm not sure. Um, and it all, it almost seems random uh, when they do it. Um, I don't know if it has to do with how much power they have left. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you just immediately start the battle and run to some guy and get into a fist fight, you know, and, and he's not even close to being down, he'll pull out the gun and shoot you if you're about to beat him. Um, I, I don't know. I, I never really figured that out. It always seemed completely random to me, but it is... It, some people would say it's maddening, but I would almost say it's charming. You would. This is, this is a, an exercise in the worst case of video game-related Stockholm Syndrome I've seen in quite some time. I, I actually think that's very, very true, because by the end of me re- reviewing this, the first time I turned it on, uh, I had that same thing happen. I got into a fist fight, and immediately the guy shot me, and then I lost the rest of the battle. And I just stared at the screen for a minute, and I thought, I'm just going to not play this anymore and just completely tear it apart. But I kept trying and kept trying, and eventually I did actually win the game. I went through enough battles to, to take out General Havoc's you know, main base, uh, which after every... After every battle, uh, it goes back to the main map, and it shows you another area to go to that gives you another map. And if you win enough of these, uh, in the scheme of things, it takes you eventually to the other opponent's base, and then you win that base level, and you've, you've beaten them. And I did do that one time, and, and I thought, that's great. I, I actually kind of like this. And then I thought about it for five minutes, and I turned it back on, and I thought, no, I don't like this. I, I played it enough to learn how to play it well, but it didn't mean I enjoyed myself while I was doing it. Yeah, and I, I would like to mention that it, it's really cool that this game, whenever you, if you do lose a battle, you don't lose the game outright, right then. Uh, you have to actually um, lose all the way back to when they get to your base. And if they beat your base, then you lose the game. So just like a real war, uh, you have to uh, actually win, you know, multiple battles in a row. And you can win two, you can lose one, and you can go back and forth like that. Uh, there's definitely a momentum, it seems, here and there for the game. But I always thought that was pretty cool that uh, it, the, it, you, you just wouldn't get a game over sign the instant that you lost your first battle. So I guess what we're saying is that Billy, not a fan at all. I'm not really a fan, but I did learn to appreciate it. I think it, it tried to do a lot of really impressive things for the time. And I guarantee you that if I would have played this game when it was new, especially with another person to play it with, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. Um, the the commandos when you get to play them and i'm pretty sure this is how two players play instead of using your mouse to move around the screen you actually move your character with the d-pad like any other sane game does and then you push the same buttons to fire and you can actually position yourself better and you have some control over things Um, but with five people that would have been too much with five characters so I, i know why the control isn't that way for five characters but 
maybe if they would have done that instead of having you move your mouse around, if you could, could I don't know, find a way to move your character one at a time with a D-pad, maybe I liked it. But uh, the, the control made it so I, I will never play this again. Uh, but I, at least I understand what they're aiming for, and I, I do appreciate it. Yeah, I would like to say, uh, before we send it off, that, that co-op really makes this a different game. Having another person there to play with you is, is so much more fun uh, to divide, divide and conquer uh, using your, your own strategies and things like that. It's so much easier, and uh, it, it, it really is a different game. And if, you've, if you ever get a chance to play General Chaos, I don't know why you would. But if you ever do, it's uh, if you can get a friend with you, it's it's actually a lot a lot of fun. And I would I would I would almost say that I would be interested to try it again that way. I, I'm never going to touch this thing again. But I, uh, it seems like that if there's I mean because it's just the controls are my main problem. This was a game, nice looking. I can't say much for the sound. I mean it's appropriate, you know, for a war game. You've got the screams of agony out on the battlefield gunfire and whatnot uh graphics were great uh i can't say anything bad about that um and i like the system jeremy was talking about where uh you kind of got to pick up momentum you've got to get a number of victories behind you i think it's a game that did a lot of things right but just had an absolutely horrendous control and it's just a matter of the control uh, just killing my enjoyment for what may have otherwise been uh, at least a half decent Genesis title. And see, I I don't know if it, it's just that as a kid I rented this so many times that uh, I have a muscle memory with this game at this point with the controls. But I am strangely still really good at this game. I was actually shocked when uh, we started talking about talking about this at first on the chat, and you guys were having so much problem with it. I was like, this is so easy. I've already been through like the second war at this point. Um, but I, I guess if you just don't know, you know, if you don't spend hours upon hours learning the game's stupid little bullshit that it has and, and overcoming those things, it's, it's just, it's probably, it probably seems impossible and maddening. So I can't fault anyone for not liking general chaos, but, uh, it, it's, I'm just going to say you guys suck at video games, and that's that's why you guys don't like it. Ouch. Yeah, I'm going for it. We're going there. I, I will go there. Well, clearly this game had some sort of following uh, because not only was it, it's one of those games that when we mentioned it, I got a little bit of a feedback that people were were definitely interested in seeing what we thought of it. Uh, But also, much like every other game that had been popular, you know, 20 years ago, there was a Kickstarter attempt by uh, the same person who was the art designer for this game, Brian Collin. Uh, He was going to do General Chaos 2, Son of Chaos. Uh, You can find some videos and things on YouTube, Um, all, all prototype things nothing that was the actual game and a lot of it looked like it was the screens they'd show before and after battles and things um also had the exact same music by the way um but it was all he asked for was one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, uh and all the rewards were things like you'll get a, a free copy of the game you'll get a signed poster you'll get to meet the you know the brian collin if you put in so much money uh after a month they only got fifteen thousand dollars out of the one hundred and twenty five thousand they had uh, and the last few updates are kind of sad, where he's like, I guess people just don't like good games. And that looks like it's the last game that his company made, uh, or attempted to make, was the General Chaos 2 Sons of Chaos Kickstarter. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of Kickstarters that, that do really well. Um, Mighty Number no. 9 is the one that, that really was a, a big hit. And then most recently we talked about the Shenmue uh, restart, and that hasn't actually come out yet, but they wanted $2 million, which they got in, you know, 18 hours or something. Uh, what other Kickstarters have come out that you've for games you used to really like that you actually are excited about that may or may not have succeeded? The one I was actually most uh, excited for recently, and I'll say I didn't actually know about that General Chaos Kickstarter. I, I would have actually donated that uh, to that, but oh well, it didn't seem like it was it would have made it regardless. But the one that I was excited that actually made it through was Road Redemption, which is a sort of uh, spiritual 
sequel to Road Rash. And that just barely made it over its uh, Kickstarter of uh, 160000 But um, I've always loved Road Rash, and I would, I would love to see it in a modern-day setting, or like in a, done in a modern day, like on current consoles or something like that. And I don't think Electronic Arts is ever going to get around to doing that. So it was neat to see Road Redemption actually come through and do that. Uh, one that I have uh, I followed originally. It started early this year. I kind of lost track of it, though, but I was very happy to see it actually got picked up. Was, uh, they had started one up. The original programmers for uh, Toe Jam and Earl have uh, been lobbying for a proper Toe Jam and Earl sequel, more in the, uh, the vein of the first one, the you know, kind of not exactly full top, you know, kind of that three-fourth top-down perspective, more of the exploration than the uh, side-scrolling that was the uh, kind of abysmal second title in the series. But it actually got picked up. I think it made a little over 500000 which meant they made their original goal, which called for a PC version, and they actually hit the stretch goal, which I believe means they are going to uh, attempt to make a PS4 version. And I have checked uh, on this very day, and it seems that everything is moving along. There's no release date, but it looks like it, it may actually happen, which I, I'm really looking forward to. I was a, a big fan of the original. I will say one that is that killed me and continued to kill me over and over again was the um, Shadow of the the Eternals Kickstarter, which was the spiritual uh, successor to Eternal Darkness on the GameCube. And that one uh, had a, a goal of 750000 and only made it up to 320000 And, of course, you know, that was a huge failure. So what they do? They put it back up again. And they failed again. So it, it just it kept doing it over and over again. I was like, just just let it die. It's not going to happen. I would love to see it, but it, it's it's it, Eternal Darkness was such a niche game that I don't think there's enough people that would fund uh, that that dollar amount to see this happen again. I don't know if that's a game that needs a sequel necessarily. I really liked it, and I I did beat it. Uh, not the number of times you need to beat it apparently to see the true ending, but I beat it once, and I I really did enjoy it, but. I don't know if the, the story leads to anything that would need a sequel. It kind of is a very self-contained and, yeah, kind of like a, it's a good one-off story, but I don't think it needs to be a series. No, I guess it, it really doesn't, but it, was, it, it would have been neat to see what they could have done uh, in, in a more modern setting. with it. I mean, their, their intended platforms for it, if this tells you anything, was uh, the Wii U and uh, PS4, so obviously that's... Uh, not going to happen, but I don't know. I thought it would have been really cool to see uh, to see a sequel and, and how they could have continued that game. Which one are you more upset about? That one not being funded or General Chaos 2? I'm totally upset about General Chaos. I didn't know anything about it. I, I, that, that was kind of shocking to learn that there was actually a General Chaos 2 um, Kickstarter. And I would have loved to seen what it would have been like on a PC. You know, having actual mouse control uh, even if they just ported the original General Chaos to PC, I would have played that. I think, yeah, like I said before, it would have been much better as a PC game with a with a mouse in your hand. Uh, I, I'm very upset you didn't find out about it until recently. I'm sure you probably would have ran down to the bank and took that loan out. Possibly. To make it happen. You could have funded that extra $110,000 they needed. Could have been on I you. I would have been there. I would have been there. I would have done everything I could. I would have sold what little I have. No, I wouldn't have, but it would have been it would have been pretty cool to see that. If you could sell hundred and ten dollars worth of stuff, I don't know why you're not doing that right now. You know, it's it's I, I this, that ship has sailed, and I cannot help that poor man anymore. He seems very jaded. Uh, if that's how he kind of came out, saying that you know people people don't like good games, it seems like me and him kind of took the same mindset over people not liking General Chaos. So it makes me sad that I couldn't have stepped in and, and maybe have. Help this poor man out to, to see his dream of General Chaos 2 actually happen. Well, I'm sure coming up soon we'll, we'll have another game where, you know, I've, I'm talking about how great it is and how amazing it is, and I've played it for years and years, and you both stare at me like I'm a crazy person and tell me off on the radio. So Just wait, just wait till those TurboGrafx-16 games. Oh, there's going to be some good ones. But there will not be a TurboGrafx-16 game next week because our random game selector has picked. Ready? Here we go. 
Oh, Billy, you're going to be happy about this one. We've got Toe Jam and Earl for the Sega Genesis. Outstanding. Outstanding. Uh, that's one I definitely I have. have played for years. You've played it for years. It's going to be a good game. I fucking I played it for years. Game. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't even know. I've never actually played Toe Jam and Earl. I, I feel bad about saying that. I have actually played um, Toe Jam and Earl 2. Pan- Pan- was that Panic on Funkatron? Yes. That was. I, I played that and enjoyed it, but I never played the original because I didn't have my Genesis at the time back back when that first came out. So you were looking too busy to playing General play Chaos. I, yeah, that one. I mean, hell, you got to pick something when there's no games, uh, no games on the shelves at the video store. And General Chaos was always there. It was always there for me. It was like a broken father. <laughs> well, that's that's a dark end for the show. <laughs> we'll go ahead and take that. Get ready for two weeks from now when we will play Toe Jam and Earl. Uh, if you're also bored, you could check out Retrovania.net. There's loads of content there. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter at Retrovaniacs uh, or on Facebook. So please find us, tell your friends, review it, and we'll see you in a couple weeks for Toe Jam and Earl.